with you guys today we're talking about safe PC temperatures for your computer now if you use software like IDA 64 you can see that we have temperatures for our motherboard the CPU the GPU even your hard drives and SSDs and all the other types of components that you may have in your computer now these all run at certain types of temperatures so it's very difficult to give you an overall maximum temperature which is a safe temperature for your hardware because each piece of hardware is going to have its own type of threshold before it fails but what I can give you is some sort of basic rule of thumb really on what these temperatures should really sort of be and what they shouldn't be now if you run programs like Prime 95 and uh, graphic types of programs that push the CPU you'll see that they climb and uh, this is because obviously you're putting a lot of uh, stress on the system and it will start to raise the temperature also things like overclocking can uh, rise the temperatures on all your hardware and you can also see that poor airflow in your case can cause uh, high temperatures dust build up in your computer can cause high temperatures and things like that ambient temperature in your room so depending on how uh, hot it is in your uh, room where you've got your computer and where the computer is stored will determine how much good airflow can get into the case and keep all the components a lot cooler so you can see here we're running a stress test with prime 95 here and uh, you can see under full load eventually once I leave this for about 15 minutes or so it won't go no higher than around about say 60 odd uh, degrees Celsius which is pretty good and it's running under air but I've got a very good uh, cooler on here so that all plays a part of it with having what type of cooler you've got whether that will be an air cooler or water cooler or whatever a choice you choose now also you may see the components on the board will be like uh, MOSFETs, capacitors, the sockets where the CPU sits they normally sit around about 100 Celsius capacitors can run at about a maximum of 105 Celsius and you've also got like MOSFETs around about 125 Celsius but you never ever want to push them at that sort of level because they will fail now you can see here we've got a picture of a case and this is basically what will happen you'll get cool air coming in from the outside in the front being drawn in by intake fans at the front and this could be a radiator in front here or it could be just fans at the front you could also have a radiator up the top with some radiator fans or you can have a CPU heatsink on there with no radiator at all at the top and this will just draw air in from the inside of the case and then the hot air is expelled out the back with the exhaust fans up the top or at the back now the PSU on the bottom will draw air in from underneath and also blow air out the back and you can also have it the other way up where the fan is inside drawing air from inside the case and blowing out the back now of course you can't have the fan facing up with, with a power supply uh, if you've got a shroud like you've got on this case you would have to have it facing down but it just goes to show you that uh, a basic setup of what a case would look like with the airflow and the way it should be for optimal performance now of course you can have a side fan as well on the side uh, window but mostly they've moved away from those types of designs because you now have normally like a, a glass uh, side panel which actually has removed the side fan now some people don't like to have a lot of fans because of the noise they create and they do make a lot more noise but with modern day technology a lot of the uh, fans nowadays will spin at a lower slower revs per minute which actually can still yield quite a lot of air inside uh, of the case which cools the components down so let's take a look at some other things here about keeping the system cool so let's first talk about removing dust as you can see we've got a case here which is clagged full of dust it's blocking all of the vents uh, where the graphics card is and where the power supply is and this is a common thing when you've got the uh, computer sitting on carpet this will suck in all of the dirt and even with dust filters like this one you can see how much thick dust has built up now sometimes dust filters can actually be worse than uh, having no dust filter at all and you can see the amount of dust that's been pulled in from the outside world into that uh, filter there so you, what you want to do is blow this out with a shop vac or compressed air to get rid of all of the dust inside 
Now also cable management is very important today because obviously uh, without good cable management you're going to end up with very poor airflow and this can obviously rise uh, the temperature inside of the case which will also rise all of the uh, components temperature like the motherboard, the hard drive, the CPU and so on. So this is what you want to go for something like this a very clean looking type of um, cable management. Now also CPU uh, compound is very important and GPU compound you want to make sure you apply that properly and sometimes if it's been a long time since you've used it you may want to reapply new stuff to keep those temperatures low. Now obviously some of the better compound will keep the uh, temperatures a lot lower than the, some of the cheaper stuff. So you may get like a 10 degree difference which can be quite a lot on some laptops. So we're going to be stress testing uh, this GPU just to show you basically uh, what it will max out like. Now games won't push it as much as this uh, software will push it but you need to make sure if you are going to be using software like this that you keep an eye on it and you don't go beyond uh, the sort of thermal capacity of that uh, graphics card because you will uh, start to cause problems and shorten the life of the GPU so be very careful when you're using software like this. Now let's go through some sort of rough estimate of temperatures what you should be sort of aiming for really and what you should steer clear of and if you've got systems that are running too hot then you may need to investigate a little bit further. Now remember every GPU is going to be different some cards run hotter than others and also ambient temperature must be taken into consideration when you're doing this depending on what country you live in with a sort of really hot uh, humid temperatures in your room if you've got a computer in there it's going to obviously be drawing in a lot more hotter air into the case and it can also make temperatures run a little bit higher so just taking into account uh, this I'm also going to put on here maximum temperature protection here and you can see it's set at 90 but I'm just going to drop this down a little bit more here down to probably something like 85 or something like that or 80 around that sort of limit because I don't want it going too high. Now like I said all GPUs are going to be different and they're going to run at different types of temperatures and it also comes down to how cool the ambient temperature is in your room and also inside the case and also what uh, coolers you've got and how cool your PC is actually generally running. I know that this runs around about 60 odd uh, Celsius and that's probably around about its maximum capacity. It won't get any hotter than that unless uh, the uh, ambient temperature is up a little bit and uh, the computer is running a little bit hotter. You may get to like 70 uh, Celsius, but really uh, I would say 70 to 75 Celsius um, is okay. Some cards, uh, you know, run a, a little bit hot and that like blower cards may run a little bit hotter but 70 to 75 is pretty much okay. If you're overclocking it obviously the temperature will go up. The CPU again you want to be a little bit careful there as well if you're overclocking and stuff like that and putting more voltage through that's obviously going to push up uh, the temperatures but I would say like the CPU modern day CPUs you know pretty much comfortable around about 70 uh, Celsius under full maximum load. And uh, I would say if you're in into the realms of 80 to 85, then you're probably uh, a cause of concern there. And I would start looking at why that's getting that hot. Maybe you're putting too much voltage through if you're overclocking. Maybe you've got uh, some sort of a compound, not enough compound on there, or it's um, dried up, or you're having issues with it. And uh, it's not going to uh, be too healthy for your PC running at 80 to 85 um, under maximum load all the time. I wouldn't I would have thought you want to draw that down a little bit to probably around about 70 under maximum load um, and try and keep it sort of there really but if you're pushing it to its highest capacities which are like 95 when probably the CPU is going to shut down uh, because it's reaching its thermal capacity it'll just go bop and shut down then that will be that and you're going to end up with constant shutting down so you can see I've got this under full load here and uh, we're using Prime 95 and this is probably more than what any sort of computer is going to be uh, taxed out at. Uh, this will run all of calls maxed out. And this is an i7-5820K and roughly what I'm getting here on maximum after 15 minutes, if I run this for 15 minutes, it will probably be no more than uh, 65 Celsius to maximum of probably about 70 Celsius if with a higher ambient temperature in the room. And that's basically where that will sit at and it will be fine at that sort of level 
and that's okay I'm not putting any extra voltage through or any overclocking or any of that sort of stuff I'm not using any of those profiles on this test it's just the standard stock speeds that I'm using here now of course uh, this can go a little bit higher I can push this even more if I want to and what you should be aiming for in my sort of estimate is most uh, CPUs from Intel max out at 100 Celsius and they will shut down normally around about 95 Celsius um, but really if you if you're running at 80 to 85 Celsius uh, at maximum temps then you've probably got a cause of concern and you may want to do something there because that'll be too high in my personal opinion and uh, that's just roughly what I would uh, keep an eye on. I wouldn't like to see the CPU go above 77, 78 Celsius uh, around them sort of figures really. Uh, but if you take a look at the Intel's website you can check out the processors it will give you the maximum capacity of that CPU and you can check we, the more modern stuff is probably going to run a little bit cooler. Uh, some of the atoms and stuff like that may run a lot hotter because that's what they were designed to do in these um, uh, smaller units you may get them running at over 100 celsius maximum but you can see here let's just try one of these uh, processors here and click on it and when you click on these it will give you the information about that cpu now sadly amd doesn't give you all this information and they don't have any sort of maximum temperatures what their cpu will run at so you have to use a sort of bit of common sense really but you can see here we're looking at the i5-8500 processor and you can come down here and it will give you uh, some information about the CPU here but if you come down you should see a maximum uh, amount of temperature that this can take uh, before you'll start running the problem there you go T-junction you can see there 100 Celsius so that's what that um, processor is there and that's mainly the maximum this will uh, run at. Now, obviously, once that's running at 100 Celsius, if that was running at 95 or 88 Celsius, then obviously that's going to draw more heat into the board, and then the board's going to start creeping up temperatures. Now, this motherboard runs at 32 to 35 Celsius. Some motherboards may run slightly hotter, and if they are, then they're going to be putting little fans on the board, like they have the new uh, X570 motherboards. They've put a little fan on them to keep them cooler. So we're looking at the CPU processors here. These will have a threshold on them as well, which will normally uh, say T-junction or something like that. Um, you can see here 100 Celsius is for this one. Hard drives, uh, again, 35, 40 Celsius, uh, you know. I wouldn't want to see a motherboard getting above, you know, 50 uh, Celsius, you know what I mean? Because that would be starting to get really toasty. So you want to keep an eye on those uh, sort of uh, temperatures for the motherboard, uh, the GPU and CPU and uh, also the RAM everything's got a temperature limit on it and that will all build up inside so once one starts getting hot all the others will start getting hot with it and the rise the temperatures on the whole system so if you have to take a look here at the uh, atom here for the T-junction it's 40 Celsius to up to 110 Celsius so they do allow a little bit more heat to run through those and it will come different for each individual CPU but generally rule of thumb is you know roughly when it's getting too hot or getting too high and uh, you can see here if you're having problems with your CPU maybe you've got a stock CPU cooler and you want to change it you have to decide whether you want to go underwater or whether you want to go by air and you can see here this is the closed loop uh, closed loop water cooling system which you can uh, get which are pretty affordable and if you want to do these your temperatures will drop down quite a fair bit if you want to go and keep to the more traditional standard of air coolers you can choose those and they do some big monstrous ones nowadays which will bring the temperatures right down the you don't need these if you're just running a standard uh, system where you're not going to overclock or anything like that you can see it's got a big warranty on it these are very good uh, affordable uh, coolers the hyper 212 evo and these are very affordable and they should bring your temperatures right down compared to just your standard stock CPU cooler that you get also you can get some of these bigger ones uh, depending on how much you want to get into it whether you're going to be overclocking if you're not going to be overclocking I wouldn't bother with the Noctua NH uh, D15 or anything like that it's not much point but they do support many different types of sockets and many different types of CPUs Intel and AMD so the choice is yours now according to Seagate their drives have a maximum temperature of 60 degrees Celsius but with adequate cooling you should see 
temperatures between 5 and 50 degrees Celsius. I think mine are running at around about 30 degrees Celsius or something along those lines. Now, of course, you can check out websites. Uh, I would advise you to check the manufacturer's website for more accurate uh, maximum, maximum temperatures that you want to look at. But you can see here for some CPUs, you can see a very uh, average of types of CPU uh, temperatures there. If you are running uh, graphics cards here, you can see some of these temperatures are at higher levels. And I certainly wouldn't want to be running my RTX 2080 Ti at 89 Celsius for long periods because you would definitely end up with card failure at some point. So just a quick recap there. If you have got sort of the CPU running at 80 to 85 Celsius, uh, then you really want to sort of uh, take a look at your um, system because I think over a longer period, you're going to end up with some problems. Again, if you've got uh, hard drives running at 60 Celsius, 70 Celsius, you're going to run into problems later on down the line. And the same thing with motherboards, uh, I would say, you know, we want to keep that as low as possible in the 30s and 40s. If you're starting to get into the 60 Celsius and stuff like that, um, unless they've got some sort of cooling system like a fan on them, you could run into problems later on down the line as well with uh, the motherboard. Uh, GPU, again, uh, I would say definitely you don't want to be going over, uh, you know, 80 Celsius uh, for prolonged periods uh, because if you do then you could run into problems probably if it was around about 70 to 75 celsius maxed out on a really hot day in your room it should be okay and you should be okay to be using that system for long periods it wouldn't be any problem now like i said there is no real easy way to give you an exact figure i just have these figures in my mind which i've said to you and the reason why I use these is because I know these are the safe thresholds for most hardware. And if I start looking at systems when I'm uh, working on them and I see, for instance, a CPU running at 85 Celsius or, or something like 90 Celsius and it's really hot, then I know there's a problem there and I would start to investigate. Same thing with the GPU. If it's running at 80 to 90 Celsius and it's super hot, I would start to look at it. Same thing with a motherboard and uh, the RAM and uh, also the... Uh, hard drive as well you can investigate once these temperatures start to get really high and normally you have to sort of look at uh, whether they're overclocking or whether there's dust in the case or whether there's issues with the hardware you just have to check the compound and things like that and go through a whole a variety of different things and to see whether you can bring those temperatures down anyway that's going to be about it for this video i'm starting to waffle on my name has been brian from brightechcomputers.co.uk hope this one helps you out if it does, then give it a thumbs up and I shall see you again for another video real soon. Thanks again for watching. Bye for now. Now, if you haven't subscribed yet, hit the big red subscribe button on my YouTube channel and hit the bell notification button next to that to be notified when we upload new videos.